Hello everyone, welcome to the Tank Club. This is my top 5 tank tips for the Blackwood chapter. So we've got the CP changes and damage received increase. The changes to the champion points for Blackwood um, have got a minimal impact for tanks. All of the CP passives have now been halved, but they also cost half the value. So if we have a look here, we've got things like Elemental Aegis is now 20 points for 2%. Everything has been halved. Everything that's a passive CP has been halved in value and halved. The bonus has been halved to go alongside that. Slobble champion points are unchanged. They are still 50 points for 10%. So the main CP that affects tanks are the Elemental Aegis and Hardy. They've been halved. So now they only give you 2% damage reduction instead of 4. However, we have got a buff to preparation which now gives you 10% damage reduction for 20 points. Fortification has been reduced down to 4% for 30 points, so we've lost we've lost a little bit of block mitigation there. We've also lost 560 max health, magicka and stamina by the CP system, but it's not going to make that much difference. All of the cost reduction CP were affected, but generally CP made hardly any significant impact anyway, so there's not a lot of huge difference this patch in terms of the increased cost of all your different skills and abilities. And Overall for this patch, tanks will now receive 2.4% more damage when blocking in Blackwood because of the changes to CP and the adjustments to the fortification CP mainly. Okay, number two, we've got the Sax Champion set. This is a new heavy armor set from the Rock Grow Trial. It's going to be useful. It's definitely going to be a useful set, mostly for trials, because it gives groups uh, the potential to have additional safety without losing any damage buffs, which is very, very strong. This set is going to be great on a Necro primarily, but it will work on any class. You don't need to be a Necro, it'll just work really well on those. Um, but you can use it with any class. You have the option to pair it with Yorval's Guidance or Drake's Rush. Both have a similar effect on the usefulness of Sax Champion. But you may just use it with something like Powerful Assault. It really depends on your group and how you're setting this up. Now the reason why this set is worth using is because it's a heavy set, so it's a tank set. You could essentially use a Necro Colossus and also get Major Force at the same time. So it's a two for one group buff, um, which is really, really like strong. One of the most effective ways I can see this set being used is having two people with a Warhorn, one person using Sax Champion, and then you do some kind of rotation where you've got one person using a Horn, then you get the Sax Champion person using their ult, then person two uses a Horn, then we get the Sax user using their ultimate again, and going in that alternative uh, strategy like that if you're able to build your ult fast enough and you kind of maneuver it in that kind of way. In progression teams I think this is going to be an essential set because you can basically use replenishing barrier on the off tank, give your group a huge shield but also give them major force at the same time. That option is just too good to pass up because it's going to potentially make trials a lot easier for a lot more groups. If you're doing a trifecta it's going to make it easy because you can spam barriers and, and give that additional safety to your group while also having the damage buff still. If you also consider the fact that you might only need two horns and one person in Sax Champion, for example, you might find that we can you can have a second defensive ultimate in there. So you get an extra ultimate, so you might have another barrier, or something like Nova might get used. Meaning trials could end up being a huge amount easier in terms of group survival by using Sax Champion, by needing less horns, by using more defensive ultimates, and making things a lot easier. Okay, number three, we've got Companions. So if you are a tank main who only really plays as a tank, then grab yourself a Companion. Get it set up as a damage dealer. This will make doing Overland and solo content a lot easier, as the Companion will be able to output some damage. You can configure them so they can do around 7k DPS, maybe more. It really depends. It's going to be dependent on how you set that up. But this should definitely make things a lot easier for, easier for casual players. And if you're one of the tanks who only plays a tank, this is going to make your life a bit easier. Companions can only be picked up in the Blackwood area, so you'll need to have the Blackwood DLC to access them. You'll have to level them up, level up the skills, and farm the gear also. So it does require a bit of effort to get them all ready and set up to go. For non-tanks, um, if you're not a tank, you can set up a tank companion. For me, Bastion is a lot better than Miri for tanking, since she has triple healing as a tank. And her tank healing skill makes her go invisible and lose aggro of all of the enemies that she's got taunted. So Bastion is much better as a tank, he's actually capable of tanking with minimal healing support from you, so if you do need a tank companion, this is going to be the one for you. Next we've got proc sets, so there was a significant adjustment to how proc sets scale. 
Various sets will scale in different ways. So they will either be damage focused, which require you to have spell or weapon damage. They'll be heal focused, which require max magic or stamina. Or tank focused, where they need either max health or resistances. So for tank focus sets, you'll need 38,350 max health or 27,890 resistances. Something like Punching Remedy now scales with max health, so that should potentially be stronger. The following sets now scale off max health. Crimson Twilight, Frozen Watcher, and Leeching Plate. The damage done by those sets scales off your max health. Things like Battalion Defender and Cyrodiil's Crest. The healing from those sets scale off max health. One of the main affected sets is Earth Gore. This now scales on either Max Magicka or Stamina, whichever is higher. To get the full heal from Earth Gore, you need 38,350 Max Magicka or Stamina. And that's not going to happen as a tank. So this means with a standard tank setup, you're losing about 10 to 15k healing from Earth Gore now. As a replacement, Chokethorn provides about 2,250 healing per second versus Earth Gore's 1,800 per second. Engine Guardian is actually the best healing set, but you can't always get healed by it when you need it. So the heal from that is 2,000 health every half a second. The only truly reliable healing mod set now would be Troll King. As a tank with Sugar Skulls and various other health recovery using a standard tank setup, with a Troll King proc, you'll be anywhere from 2 to 5k health recovery. The only problem is health recovery only takes once every 2 seconds. So you will kind of have the same healing output as Earth Gore. However, you won't need to stand still to get the benefit from Troll King like you do with healing sets such as Chokethorn, Earth Gore, Scourge Harvester. There's other sets that now scale off uh, max health, so things like Lady Thorn damage, Scourge Harvester damage, Shadow End damage, the Vulcan damage, they scale off max health. Finally, we've got Alkosh. Now, is it kind of back for Magicka groups? Potentially. Uh, so in some trial situations, some trial boss situations, you will potentially use Alkosh again. If we take Rockgrove hard mode as an example, there are so many ads in hard mode on Rockgrove, for instance, that it makes sense to use Alkosh, or else you won't be able to reach the pen cap. The ads will take longer to die. So some people also insist using six light armor. You'll need to take a look at your own group, see if Alkosh is worth using. If you have a lot of people not on Necros and using 6 light rather than 7, and you are capable of over a 75% Alkosh uptime, then potentially it's worth using. The pen CP got halved, which is why this now creates this situation. Magic Adidas can just use 7 light armor. In ad pulls, it's still worth using Alkosh. Stamina groups, still worth using Alkosh. In situations where you've got a lot of ads on a boss fight, Alkosh is worth considering. Another fight where that might be possible is on Sunspire. So where you get the ad phases on the when the boss flies in the air, especially the last boss, Alkosh is worth using for that kind of situation as well. There are no real right or wrong answer for this, so use Alkosh if your group needs it, and if you can keep a good uptime. In my opinion, it's not worth using if you can't get over 75% because you spend too long without the armor shred active, and it's ineffective. So you're better off just having the DDs in 7 light armor, and use a more consistent group utility set. So I hope you all enjoy the new Blackwood DLC. I'm personally very excited and looking forward to getting into Rock Grove. If you have any tank questions about the DLC, you can always hit me up in the comments section. You can also tweet me at the Tank Club and post in the Tank Club Discord or catch me on stream where I answer basically hundreds of questions every week live on stream. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all in Blackwood. Bye bye for now.